A marvelous sun looked down from ecstasy skies on worlds of deathless bliss, perfection's home, magical unfoldings of the eternal smile, capturing his secret heartbeats of delight. God's everlasting day surrounded her. Domains appeared of sempiternal light invading all nature with the absolute joy. Her body quivered with eternity's touch. Her soul stood close to the founts of the infinite. Infinity's finite fronts she lived in, new forever to an ever-living sight. Eternity multiplied its vast self-look, translating its endless mightiness and joy into delight. Souls playing with time could share in grandeurs, ever newborn from the unknown's depths, in powers that leaped immortal from unknown heights, in passionate heartbeats of an undying love, in scenes of a sweetness that can never fade. Immortal to the rapturous heart and eyes, in serene arches of translucent calm, from wonders dream wafts, cloudless skies slid down, an abyss of sapphire, sunlight visited eyes which suffered without pain the absolute ray and saw immortal clarities of form. Twilight and mist were exiles from that air. Night was impossible to such radiant heavens. Firm in the bosom of immensity, spiritual breaths were seen, sublimely born, from a still beauty of creative joy. Embodied thoughts to sweet dimensions held, to please some carelessness of divine peace, answered the deep demand of an infinite sense and its need of forms to house its bodiless thrill. A march of universal powers in time, the harmonic order of self's vastitudes in cyclic symmetries and metric planes harbored a cosmic rapture's revelry an endless figuring of the spirit in things planned by the artist who had dreamed the world. Of all the beauty and the marvel here, of all time's intricate variety, eternity was the substance and the source. Not from a plastic mist of matter made, they offered the suggestion of their depths and opened the great series of their powers. Arisen beneath a triple mystic heaven, the seven immortal earths were seen sublime. Homes of the blessed released from death and sleep where grief can never come nor any pang arriving from self-lost and seeking worlds alter heaven nature's changeless quietude and mighty posture of eternal calm, its pose of ecstasy immutable. Plains lay that seemed the expanse of God's wide sleep, Thoughts' wings climbed up 
towards heaven's vast repose, lost in blue deeps of immortality. A changed earth nature felt the breath of peace. Air seemed an ocean of felicity or the couch of the unknown spiritual rest, a vast quiescence swallowing up all sound into a voicelessness of utter bliss. Even matter brought a close spiritual touch, all thrilled with the imminence of one divine. The lowest of these earths was still a heaven, translating into the splendor of things divine, the beauty and brightness of terrestrial scenes. Eternal mountains, ridge on gleaming ridge, whose lines were graved as on a sapphire plate and etched the borders of heaven's lustrous noon, climbed like piled temple stairs, and from their heads of topless meditation, heard below the approach of a blue pilgrim multitude and listened to a great arriving voice of the wide travel hymn of timeless seas. A chanting crowd from mountain bosom slipped past branches fragrant with a sigh of flowers, hurrying through sweetnesses with revel leaps. The murmurous rivers of felicity divinely rippled honey-voiced desires, mingling their sister eddies of delight, then widening to a pace of calm-lipped muse, down many glimmered estuaries of dream went whispering into lakes of liquid peace. On a brink held of senseless ecstasy and guarding an eternal poise of thought sat sculptured souls dreaming by rivers of sound in changeless attitudes of marble bliss. Around her lived the children of God's day in an unspeakable felicity, a happiness never lost, the immortal's ease, a glad eternity's blissful multitude. Around the deathless nations moved and spoke souls of a luminous celestial joy, faces of stark beauty, limbs of the molded ray. In cities cut like gems of conscious stone and wonderful pastures and on gleaming coasts, Bright forms were seen, eternity's luminous tribes. Above her rhythming godheads whirled the spheres, rapt mobile fixities here blindly sought by the huge airing orbits of our stars. Ecstatic voices smote at hearing scores, each movement found a music all its own. Songs thrilled of birds upon unfading boughs, the colors of whose plumage had been caught from the rainbow of imagination's wings. Immortal fragrance packed the quivering breeze, in groves that seemed moved bosoms and trembling depths 
the million children of the undying spring bloom pure unnumbered stars of huge delight nestling for shelter in their emerald skies fairy flower masses looked with laughing eyes a dancing chaos an iridescent sea eternized to heaven's ever wakeful sight the crowding petal glow of marble stints which float across the curtain lids of dream immortal harmonies fill her listening ear a great spontaneous utterance of the heights on titan wings of rhythmic grandeur born poured from some deep spiritual heart of sound strain trembling with the secrets of the gods a spirit wandered happily in the wind a spirit brooded in the leaf and stone the voices of thought conscious instruments along a living world of silence strayed and from some deep a wordless tongue of things unfathomed inexpressible chantings rose translating into a voice the unknown a climber on the invisible stair of sound music not with these few and striving steps aspired that wander upon transient strings but changed its ever new uncounted notes in a passion of unforeseen discovery and kept its old unforgotten ecstasies a growing treasure in the mystic heart a consciousness that yearned through every cry of unexplored attraction and desire it found and searched again the unsatisfied deeps hunting as if in some deep secret heart to find some lost or missed felicity in those far lapsing symphony she could hear breaking through enchantments of the ravi sense the lyric voyage of a divine soul mid spume and laughter tempting with its prow the charm of innocent kirkean isles adventures without danger beautiful in lands the siren wonder sings its lures from rhythmic rocks in ever foaming seas in the harmony of an original sight delivered from our limiting ray of thought and the reluctance of our blinded hearts to embrace the godhead in whatever guise she saw all nature marvelous without fault invaded by beauty's universal revel her being's fiber reached out vibrating and claimed deep union with its outer selves and on the heart's chords made pure to seize all those heaven subtleties of touch unwearing forced more vivid raptures than earth's life can bear what would be suffering here was fiery bliss all here but passionate hint and mystic shade divine by the inner prophet who perceives the spirit of delight in sensuous things turn to more sweetness than can now be dreamed
the mighty signs of which earth fears the stress, trembling because she cannot understand and must keep obscure in forms strange and sublime, where here the first lexicon of an infinite mind translating the language of eternal bliss. Here rapture was a common incident, the loveliness of whose captured thrill our human pleasure is a fallen thread, lay symbol shapes, a careless ornament sewn on the rich brocade of Godhead's dress. Things fashioned where the imaged homes where mind arrived to fathom a deep physical joy. The heart was a torch lit from infinity. The limbs were trembling densities of soul. These were the first domains, the outer courts, immense but least in range and least in price, the slightest ecstasies of the undying gods. Higher her swing of vision swept and new, admitted through large sapphire opening gates into the wideness of a light beyond. These were but sumptuous decorated doors to worlds nobler, more felicitously fair. Endless aspired the climbing of those heavens. Realm upon realm received her soaring view. Then on what seemed one crown of the ascent, where the finite and the infinite are one, immune she beheld the strong immortal seats who live for a celestial joy and rule, the middle regions of the unfading ray. Great forms of deity sat in deathless tears, eyes of an unborn gaze towards her lean through a transparency of crystal fire. In the beauty of bodies wrought from rapture's lines, shapes of entrancing sweetness, spilling bliss, feet glimmering upon the sunstone courts of mind, heaven's cupbearers bore round the eternal's wine. A tangle of bright bodies of moved souls tracing the close and intertwined delight the harmonious tread of lives forever joined in the passionate oneness of a mystic joy, as if sunbeams made living and divine, the golden bosom apsara goddesses in groves flooded from an argent disk of bliss that floated through a luminous sapphire dream in a cloud of raiment lit with golden limbs and gleaming footfalls treading fairy swords, virgin motions of bacchant innocences who know their riot for a dance of God, world linked in moonlit revels of the heart. Impeccable artists of unerring forms, magician builders of sound and rhythmic words, wind-haired Gandharvas chanted to the ear the odes that shape the universal thought 
the lines that tear the veil from deity's face, the rhythms that bring the sounds of wisdom see. Immortal figures and illumined brows, our great forefathers in those splendors move. Termless in power and satisfied of light, they enjoyed the sense of all for which we strive. High seers, move poets, saw the eternal thoughts that travelers from on high arrived to us, deformed by our search, tricked by costuming mind, like gods disfigured by the pangs of birth, seized the great words which now are frail sounds caught by difficult rapture on a mortal tongue. The strong who stumble and sin were calm, proud gods. There, lightning filled with glory and with flame, melting in waves of sympathy and sight, smitten like a lyre that throbs to others' bliss, drawn by the chords of ecstasies unknown, her human nature faint with heaven's delight. She beheld the clasp to earth denied and bore the imperishable eyes of veilless love. More climbed above, level to level reached, beyond what tongue can utter or mind dream. Worlds of an infinite reach crowned heaven's stir. There was a greater tranquil sweetness there, a subtler and profounder ether's field and mightier scheme than heavenlier sense can give. Their breath carried a stream of seeing mind. Form was a tenuous raiment of the soul. Color was a visible tone of ecstasy. Shapes seen half immaterial by the gaze and yet voluptuously palpable made sensible to touch the indwelling spirit. The high perfected sense illumined lived a happy vassal of the inner ray. Each feeling was the eternal's mighty child and every thought was a sweet burning God. Air was a luminous feeling, sound a voice, sunlight the soul's vision, and moonlight its dream. On a wide living base of wordless calm, all was a potent and a lucent joy. Into those heights her spirit went, floating up like an upsoaring bird who mounts unseen, voicing to the ascent his throbbing heart of melody, till a pause of closing wings comes quivering in his last contented cry, and he is silent with his soul discharged, delivered of his heart's burden of delight. Experience mounted on joy's colored breast to inaccessible spheres in spiral flight. There time dwelt with eternity as one. 
immense felicity, joined rapt repose. As one drowned in a sea of splendor and bliss, mute in the maze of these surprising worlds, turning she saw their living knot and source, key to their charm and fount of their delight, and knew him for the same who snares our lives, captured in his terrifying pitiless net and makes the universe his prison camp and makes in his immense and vacant mass the labor of the stars, a circuit vain and death the end of every human road and grief and pain the wages of man's toil. One whom her soul had faced as death and night, a sum of all sweetness gathered into his limbs and blinded her heart to the beauty of the sun. Transfigured was the formidable shape his darkness and his sad destroying might, abolishing forever and disclosing the mystery of his high and violent deeds, a secret splendor rose revealed to sight where once the vast embodied void had stood. Night the dim mask had grown a wonderful face. The vague infinity was slain, whose gloom had outlined from the terrible unknown, the obscure, disastrous figure of a god. Fled was the error that arms the hands of grief and lighted the ignorant gulf whose hollow deeps had given to nothingness a dreadful voice. As when before the eye that wakes in sleep is open the somber binding of a book, illumined letterings are seen which kept a golden blaze of thought inscribed within, a marvelous form responded to her gaze, whose sweetness justified life's blindest pain. All nature's struggle was its easy price. The universe and its agony seemed worthwhile. As if the choric calyx of a flower, aerial, visible on music's waves, a lotus of light petaled ecstasy took shape out of the tremulous heart of things. There was no more the torment under the stars, the evil sheltered behind nature's mask, there was no more the dark pretense of hate, the cruel rictus on life's altered face. Hate was the grip of a dreadful amour strife, a ruthless love intent only to possess has here replaced the sweet original God. Forgetting the will to love that gave it birth, the passion to lock itself in and to unite, it would swallow all into one lonely self, devouring the soul that it had made its own by suffering and annihilation's pain, punishing 
the unwillingness to be one, angry with the refusals of the world, passionate to take, but knowing not how to give. That somber cowl was cast from nature's brow. There lightened on her the Godhead's lurking laugh. All grace and glory and all divinity were here collected in a single form. All worshipped eyes looked through his from one face. He bore all Godheads in his grandiose limbs. An oceanic spirit dwelt within, intolerant and invincible in joy, a flood of freedom and transcendent bliss into immortal lines of beauty rose. In him, the fourfold being bore its crown that wears the mystery of a nameless name, the universe writing its tremendous sense in the inexhaustible meaning of a word. In him, the architect of the visible world, at once the art and artist of his works, spirit and seer and thinker of things seen, Virat, who lights his campfires in the suns and the star-entangled ether is his hold, expressed himself with matter for his speech. Objects are his letters, forces are his words, events are the crowded history of his life, and sea and land are the pages for his tale. Matter is his means and his spiritual sign. He hangs the thought upon a lashes lift in the current of the blood makes flow the soul. His is the dumb will of atom and of crud, a will that without sense or motive acts an intelligence, needing not to think or plan. The world creates itself invincibly for its body is the body of the lord and in its heart stands virat king of kings in him shadows his form the golden child who in the sun-capped vast cradles his birth Hiranya Garba, author of thoughts and dreams, who sees the invisible and hears the sounds that never visited a mortal ear, discoverer of unthought realities, truer to truth than all we have ever known. He is the leader on the inner roads. A seer, he has entered the forbidden realms. A magician with the omnipotent wand of thought, he builds the secret, uncreated worlds. Armed with the golden speech, the diamond eye, his is the vision and the prophecy. Imagist, casting the formless into shape, traveller and hewer of the unseen paths, he is the carrier of the hidden fire, he is the voice of the ineffable,
He is the invisible hunter of the light, the angel of mysterious ecstasies, the conqueror of the kingdoms of the soul. A third spirit stood behind their hidden cause, a mass of superconscious, closed in light, creator of things in his all-knowing sleep. All from his stillness came as grows a tree. He is our seed and core, our head and base. All light is but a flash from his closed eyes. And all wise truth is mystic in his heart. The omniscient ray is shut behind his lids. He is the wisdom that comes not by thought. His wordless silence brings the immortal word. He sleeps in the atom and the burning star. He sleeps in man and God and beast and stone. Because he is there, the inconscient does its work. Because he is there, the world forgets to die. He is the center of the circle of God. He is the circumference of nature's run. His slumber is an almightiness in things. Awake he is the eternal and supreme. Above was the brooding bliss of the infinite. Its omniscient and omnipotent repose, its immobile silence, absolute and alone. All powers were woven in countless concords here. The bliss that made the world in his body lived. Love and delight were the head of the sweet form. In the alluring meshes of their snare, recaptured the proud, blissful members held all joys, outrunners of the panting heart and fugitive from life's outstripped desire. Whatever vision has escaped the eye, whatever happiness comes in dream and trance, the nectar spilled by love with trembling hands, the joy the cup of nature cannot hold had crowded to the beauty of his face, here waiting in the honey of his love. Things hidden by the silence of the hours, the ideas that find no voice on living lips, the soul's pregnant meeting with infinity had come to birth in him and taken fire. The secret whisper of the flower and star revealed its meaning in his fathomless look. His lips curved eloquent like a rose of dawn. His smile that played with the wonder of the mind and stayed in the heart when it had left his mouth glimmered with the radiance of the morning star gemming the wide discovery of heaven. His gaze was the regard of eternity, the spirit of its sweet and calm intent was a wise home of gladness and divulged the light of the ages in the mirth of the hours, a son of wisdom in a miracle grove. In the orchestral largeness of his mind, 
all contrary seekings, their close kinship new, rich hearted, wonderful to each other, met in the mutual marveling of their myriad notes, and dwelt like brothers of one family who had found their common and mysterious home. As from the harp of some ecstatic god, there springs a harmony of lyric bliss, striving to leave no heavenly joy unsung. Such was the life in that embodied light. He seemed the wideness of a boundless sky. He seemed the passion of a sorrowless earth. He seemed the burning of a worldwide sun. Two looked upon each other, soul, saw, soul. Then like an anthem from the heart's loosened cave, a voice soared up whose magic sound could turn the poignant weeping of the earth to sobs of rapture and her cry to spirit sung. O human image of the deathless word, how hast thou seen beyond the topaz walls the gleaming sisters of the divine gate summon the genii of their wakeful sleep and under revelation's arches forced the carved, thought-shrouded doors to swing apart, unlock the avenues of spiritual sight, and taught the entries of a heavenly estate to thy rapt soul that bore the golden key. In thee, the secret sight, Man's blindness mist has opened its view past time. My chariot course and death, my tunnel which I drive through life to reach my unseen distances of bliss. I am the hushed search of the jealous gods pursuing my wisdom's vast mysterious work seized in the thousand meeting ways of heaven. I am the beauty of the unveiled ray, drawing through the deep roads of the infinite night the unconquerable pilgrim soul of earth beneath the flaring torches of the stars. I am the inviolable ecstasy. They who have looked at me shall grieve no more. The eyes that live in night shall see my form. On the pale shores of foaming steely straits that flow beneath a grey tormented sky, two powers from one original ecstasy born, pace near, but parted in the life of man. One leans to earth, the other yearns to the skies. Heaven in its rapture dreams of perfect earth. Earth in her sorrow dreams of perfect heaven. The two, longing to join, yet walk apart, idly divided by their vain conceits. They are kept from their oneness by enchanted fears, sundered mysteriously by miles of thought, they gaze across the silent gulfs of sleep or side by side reclined upon my vasts like bride and bridegroom, 
magically divorced, they wake to yearn, but never can they clasp, while thinly flickering, hesitates uncrossed between the lovers on their nuptial couch, the shadowy idolon of a soul. But when the phantom flame edge fails undone, then never more can space or time divide the lover from the lover. Space shall draw back her great translucent curtain. Time shall be the quivering of the spirit's endless bliss. Attend that moment of celestial fate. Meanwhile, you too shall serve the dual law, which only now the scouts of vision glimpse, who, pressing through the forest of their thoughts, have found the narrow bridges of the gods. Wait, patient, of the brittle bars of form, making division your delightful means of happy oneness, rapturously enhanced by attraction in the throbbing air between. Yet if thou wouldst abandon the next world, careless of the dark moor of things below, Tread down the isthmus, overleap the flood. Cancel thy contract with the laboring force. Renounce the tie that joins thee to earth kind. Cast off thy sympathy with mortal hearts. Arise, vindicate thy spirit's conquered right. Relinquishing thy charge of transient breath under the cold gaze of the indifferent stars, leaving thy borrowed body on the sod, ascend, O soul, into thy blissful home. Here in the playground of the eternal child, or in domains, the wise immortals tread, roam with thy comrade splendor under skies spiritual, lit by an unsetting sun, as Godheads live who care not for the world and share not in the toil of nature's powers. Absorbed in their self-ecstasy they dwell, Cast off the ambiguous myth of earth's desire, O immortal, to felicity arise. On Savitri listening in her tranquil heart to the harmony of the ensnaring voice, a joy exceeding earth's and heaven's poured down the bliss of unknown eternity, a rapture from some waiting infinite. A smile came rippling out in her wide eyes, its confident felicity's messenger, as if the first beam of the morning sun rippled along two wakened lotus pools. O oh, besetter of man's soul with life and death and the world's pleasure and pain and day and night, tempting his heart with the far lure of heaven, testing his strength with the close touch of hell, I climb not to thy everlasting day even as I have shunned thy eternal night. For me, who turn not from thy terrestrial way, give back the other self 
my nature asks. Thy spaces need him not to help their joy. Earth needs his beautiful spirit made by thee to fling delight down like a net of gold. Earth is the chosen place of mightiest souls. Earth is the heroic spirit's battlefield, the forge where the art mason shapes his works. Thy servitudes on earth are greater, King, than all the glorious liberties of heaven. The heavens were once to me my natural home. I too have wandered in star jewel groves, paced sun gold pastures, and moon silver swords, and heard the harping laughter of their streams and lingered under branches dropping myrrh. I too have reveled in the fields of light touched by the ethereal raiment of the winds. Thy wonder rounds of music I have trod, lived in the rhyme of bright unlabouring force. I have beat swift harmonies of rapture vast, danced in spontaneous measures of the soul, the great and easy dances of the gods. O oh, fragrant are the lanes thy children walk, and lovely is the memory of their feet amid the wonder flowers of paradise. A heavier tread is mine, a mightier touch. There where the gods and demons battle in night or wrestle on the borders of the sun, taught by the sweetness and the pain of life, to bear the uneven, strenuous beat that throbs against the edge of some divinest hope, to dare the impossible with these pangs of search. In me, the spirit of immortal love stretches its arms out to embrace mankind. Too far thy heavens for me from suffering men. Imperfect is the joy not shared by all. Oh, to spread forth, or oh, to encircle and seize more hearts till love in us has filled the world. O oh, life, the life beneath the wheeling stars, for victory, in the tournament with death, for bending of the fierce and difficult bow, for flashing of the splendid sword of God. O thou, who soundest the trumpet in the lists, part not the handle from the untried steel, take not the warrior with his blow unstruck, are there not still a million fights to wage? O Kingsmith, clang on still, thy toil begun. Weld us to one in thy strong smithy of life. Thy fine curved jeweled hilt called Savitri, thy blades exultant smile, name, Satyavan. Fashion to beauty, point us through the world. Break not the lyre before the song is found. Are there not still unnumbered chants to weave? O oh, subtle soul, musician of the years, play out what thou hast fluted on my stops. Arise from the strain 
their first wild plane divined, and that discover which is yet unsung. I know that I can lift man's soul to God. I know that he can bring the immortal down. Our will labors, permitted by thy will, and without thee an empty roar of storm. A senseless whirlwind is the titan's force, and without thee a snare the strength of gods. Let not the inconstant gulf swallow man's race, that through earth's ignorance struggles towards thy light. O thunderer, with the lightnings of the soul, give not to darkness and to death thy son, achieve thy wisdom's hidden firm decree and the mandate of thy secret worldwide love. Her words failed, lost in thought's immensities, which seized them at the limits of their cry and hid their meaning in the distances that stir to more than ever speech has won. From the unthinkable end of all our thoughts and from the ineffable from whom all words come. Then with a smile august as noonday heavens, the Godhead of the vision wonderful. How shall earth nature and man's nature rise to the celestial levels, yet earth abide? Heaven and earth towards each other gaze across a gulf that few can cross, none touch arriving through a vague ethereal mist out of which all things form that move in space, the shore that all can see but never reach. Heaven's light visits sometimes the mind of earth. Its thoughts burn in her sky like lonely stars. In her heart their move, celestial, seeking, soft and beautiful, like fluttering wings of birds, visions of joy that she can never win, traverse the fading mirror of her dreams. Faint seeds of light and bliss bear sorrowful flowers. Faint harmonies caught from a half-heard song fall swooning mid the wandering voices jar. Foam from the tossing luminous seas where dwells the beautiful and far delight of gods. Raptures unknown, a miracle happiness thrill her and pass half-shaped to mind and sense. Above her little finite step she feels, careless of naught or pause, worlds which weave out a strange perfection beyond law and rule, a universe of self-found felicity an inexpressible rhythm of timeless beats, the many movemented heartbeats of the one, magic of the boundless harmonies of self, order of the freedom of the infinite, the wonder plastics of the absolute. There is the old truth and there the timeless bliss. But hers are fragments 
of a star lost gleam hers are but careless visits of the gods they are a light that fails a word soon hushed and nothing they mean can stay for long on earth there are high glimpses not the lasting sight a few can climb to an unperishing sun or live on the edges of the mystic moon and channel to earth mind the wizard ray the heroes and the demigods are few to whom the close immortal voices speak and to their acts the heavenly clan are near few are the silences in which truth is heard unveiling the timeless utterance in her deeps few are the splendid moments of the seers heaven's call is rare rarer the heart that heals the doors of light are sealed to common mind and earth's needs nailed to earth the human mass only in an uplifting hour of stress men answer to the touch of greater things or raised by some strong hand to breathe heaven air they slide back to the mud from which they climb in the mud of which they are made whose law they know they joy in safe return to a friendly base and though something in them weeps for glory lost and greatness murdered they accept their fall to be the common man they think the best to live as others live is their delight for most are built on nature's early plan and oh small debt to a superior plane the human average is their level pitch a thinking animal's material range in the long ever mounting hierarchy in the stark economy of cosmic life each creature to its appointed task and place is bound by his nature's form his spirit's force if this were easily disturbed it would break the settled balance of created things the perpetual order of the universe would tremble and a gap yawn in woven fate if men were not and all were brilliant gods the mediating stair would then be lost by which the spirit awake in matter winds accepting the circuits of the middle way by heavy toil and slow aeonic steps reaching the bright miraculous fringe of god into the glory of the over soul my will my call is there in men and things but the inconscient lies at the world's gray back and draws to its breast of night and death and sleep imprisoned in its dark and dumb abyss a little consciousness it lets escape but jealous of the growing light holds back close to the obscure edges of its cave as if a fond ignorant mother kept her child tied 
to her apron strings of messiers. The inconscient could not read without man's mind the mystery of the world its sleep has made. Man is its key to unlock a conscious door. But still it holds him dangled in its grasp. It draws its giant circle round his thoughts. It shuts his heart to the supernal light. A high and dazzling limit shines above. A black and blinding border rules below. His mind is closed between two firmaments. He seeks through words and images the truth and pouring on surfaces and brute outsides or dipping conscious feet in shallow seas even his knowledge is an ignorance. He is barred out from his own inner depths. He cannot look on the face of the unknown. How shall he see with the omniscient's eyes? How shall he will with the omnipotent's force? Oh, too compassionate and eager dawn, Leave to the circling aeon's tardy pace and to the working of the inconscient will. Leave to its imperfect light the earthly race. All shall be done by the long act of time. Although the race is bound by its own kind, the soul in man is greater than his fate. Above the wash and surge of time and space, disengaging from the cosmic commonality by which all life is kin in grief and joy, delivered from the universal law, the sun-like, single and transcendent spirit can blaze its way through the mind's barrier wall and burn alone in the eternal sky, inhabitant of a wide and endless calm. O flame, withdraw into thy luminous self, or else return to thy original might on a seer summit above thought and world. Partner of my unhoured eternity, be one with the infinity of my power. For thou art the world mother and the bride, out of the fruitless yearning of earth's life, out of her feeble, unconvincing dream, recovering wings that cross infinity, pass back into the power from which thou camest. To that thou canst uplift thy formless flight, thy heart can rise from its unsatisfied beats and feel the immortal and spiritual joy of a soul that never lost felicity. Lift up the fallen heart of love which flutters, cast down desire's abyss into the gulfs. Forever rescued out of nature's shapes, discover what the aimless cycles want, there intertwined with all thy life has meant, here vainly sought in a terrestrial form. 
break into eternity thy mortal mold, melt lightning into thy invisible flame. Clasp ocean deep into thyself, thy wave, happy forever in the embosoming surge. Grow one with the still passion of the depths, then shalt thou know the lover and the lover, leaving the limits dividing him and thee. Receive him into boundless savitri, lose thyself into infinite satyava. O miracle, where thou beganest, there cease. But Savitri answered to the radiant God, In vain thou temptest with solitary bliss two spirits saved out of a suffering world. My soul and his indissolubly linked in the one task for which our lives were born, to raise the world to God in deathless light, to bring God down to the world on earth, we came to change the earthly life to life divine. I keep my will to save the world and man. Even the charm of thy alluring voice, O blissful Godhead, cannot seize and snare. I sacrifice not earth to happier worlds, because there dwelt the Eternal's vast idea and his dynamic will in men and things. So only could the enormous scene begin. Whence came this profitless wilderness of stars, this mighty barren wheeling of the suns? Who made the soul of futile life in time, planted a purpose and a hope in the heart, set nature to a huge and meaningless task, or planned her million aeon efforts waste? What force condemned to birth and death and tears these conscious creatures crawling on the globe? If earth can look up to the light of heaven and hear an answer to her lonely cry, not rain their meeting nor heavens touch a snare. If thou and I are true, the world is true. Although thou hide thyself behind thy works, to be is not a senseless paradox. Since God has made earth, earth must make in her God. What hides within her breast she must reveal. I claim thee for the world that thou hast made. If man lives bound by his humanity, if he is tied forever to his pain, let a greater being then arise from man. The superhuman with the eternal mate and the immortal shine through earthly forms. Else were creation vain and this great world a nothing that in time's moment seems to be. But I have seen through the insentient mask, I have felt a secret spirit stir in things carrying the body of the growing God. It looks through veiling forms at veilless truth. It pushes back the curtain of the gods. It climbs towards its own eternity. 
What's the God answer to the woman's heart? O oh, living power of the incarnate world, all that the spirit has dreamed, thou canst create. Thou art the force by which I made the world. Thou art my vision and my will and voice. But knowledge too is thine, the world plan thou knowest, and the tardy process of the pace of time. In the impetuous drive of thy heart of flame, in thy passion to deliver man and earth, indignant at the impediments of time and the slow evolution sluggard steps, lead not the spirit in an ignorant world to dare too soon the adventure of the light, pushing the bound and slumbering God in man, awakened mid the ineffable silences into endless vistas of the unknown and unseen, across the last confines of the limiting mind and the superconscious perilous borderline into the danger of the infinite. But if thou wilt not wait for time and God, do then thy work and force thy will on fate. As I have taken from thee my load of night and taken from thee my twilight's doubts and dreams, so now I take my light of utter day. These are my symbol kingdoms, but not here can the great choice be made that fixes fate or uttered the sanction of the voice supreme. Arise upon a ladder of greater worlds to the infinity where no world can be. But not in the wide air where a greater life uplifts its mystery and its miracle and not on the luminous peaks of summit mind, or in the hold where subtle matter spirit hides in its light of shimmering secrecies, can there be heard the eternal's firm command that joins the head of destiny to its base. These only are the mediating links. Not theirs is the originating sight, nor the fulfilling act or last support that bears perpetually the cosmic pile. Two are the powers that hold the ends of time. Spirit foresees. Matter unfolds its thought, the dumb executor of God's decrees, omitting no iota and no dot, agent unquestioning, inconscient, stark, evolving inevitably a charged content, intention of his force in time and space, inanimate beings, and inanimate things. Immutably it fulfills its ordered task. It cancels not a tittle of things done. Unswerving from the oracular command, it alters not the steps of the unseen. If thou must indeed deliver man on earth on the spiritual heights, look down on life. Discover the truth of God and man and world, then do thy work, knowing and seeing all. Ascend, O soul, into thy timeless self. Choose destiny's curve and stamp thy will on time. He ended upon the failing sound. A power went forth that shook the founder spheres and loosed the stakes that hold the tents of form. 
absolved from vision's grip and the folds of thought, wrapped from her sense like disappearing scenes in the stupendous theater of space, the heaven worlds vanished in spiritual light. A movement was abroad, a cry, a word, beginningless in its vast discovery, momentless in its unthinkable return. Coiled in calm seas, she heard the eternal thought rhythming itself abroad unutterably in spaceless orbits and on timeless roads. In an ineffable world she lived fulfilled. An energy of the triune infinite in a measureless reality she dwelt, a rapture and a being and a force, a linked and myriad motion plenitude, a virgin unity, a luminous spouse housing a multitudinous embrace to marry all in God's immense delight, bearing the eternity of every spirit, bearing the burden of universal love, a wonderful mother of unnumbered souls. All things she knew, all things imagined or willed, her ear was open to ideal sound, shaped the convention bound no more her sight, a thousand doors of oneness was her heart. A crypt and sanctuary of brooding light appeared, the last recess of things beyond. Then in its rounds the enormous fiat paused. Silence gave back to the unknowable or it had given still was her listening thought. The form of things had ceased within her soul, invisible, that perfect Godhead now. Around her some tremendous spirit lived, mysterious flame around a melting pearl, and in the phantom of abolished space, there was a voice unheard by ears that cried. Choose spirit by supreme choice not given again. For now from my highest being looks on thee the nameless formless peace where all things rest. In a happy vast sublime cessation no, an immense extinction in eternity, a point that disappears in the infinite, felicity of the extinguished flame, last sinking of a wave in a boundless sea, end of the trouble of thy wandering thoughts, close of the journey, of thy pilgrim soul. Accept, O music, weariness of thy notes, O stream, wide breaking of thy channel banks. The moments fell into eternity, but someone yearned within a bosom unknown and silently the woman's heart replied, Thy peace, O Lord, a boon within to keep amid the roar and ruin of wild time for the magnificent soul of man on earth. Thy calm, O Lord, that bears thy hands of joy. 
limitless like ocean round a lonely isle, a second time the eternal cry arose. Wide open are the ineffable gates in front. My spirit leans down to break the knot of earth, amorous of oneness, without thought or sign, to cast down wall and fence, to strip heaven bare, see with the large eye of infinity, unweave the stars, and into silence pass. In an immense and world-destroying pause, she heard a million creatures cry to her. Through the tremendous stillness of her thoughts, immeasurably the woman's nature spoke. Thy oneness, Lord, in many approaching hearts, my sweet infinity, of thy numberless soul. Mightily retreating like a sea in ebb, a third time swelled the great admonishing call. I spread abroad the refuge of my wings. Out of its incommunicable deeps, my power looks forth of mightiest splendor stilled into its majesty of sleep, withdrawn above the dreadful whirlings of the world. A sob of things was answered to the voice, and passionately the woman's heart replied, Thy energy, Lord, to seize on woman and man, to take all things and creatures in their grief and gather them into a mother's arms. Solemn and distant, like a seraph's lamb, a last great time the warning sound was heard. I open the wide eye of solitude to uncover the voiceless rapture of my bliss, where in a pure and exquisite hush it lies, motionless in its slumber of ecstasy, resting from the sweet madness of the dance, out of whose beat the throb of hearts was born, breaking the silence with appeal and cry, a hymn of adoration, tireless climb, a music beat of winged uniting souls, and all the woman yearningly replied, Thy embrace, which rends the living knot of pain, thy joy, O Lord, in which all creatures breathe, thy magic flowing waters of deep love, thy sweetness, give to me for earth and men. Then after silence, a still blissful cry began, such as arose from the infinite, when the first whisperings of a strange delight imagined in its deep the joy to seek the passion to discover and to touch the enamoured laugh that rhymed the chanting worlds. O beautiful body of the incarnate word, thy thoughts are mine, I have spoken with thy voice. My will is thine, what thou hast chosen, I choose. All thou hast asked, I give to earth and men. All shall be written out in destiny's book by my trustee of thought and plan and act, the executor of my will, eternal time. 
But since thou hast refused my maimless calm and turned from my termless peace in which is expunged the visage of space and the shape of time is lost, and from happy extinction of thy separate self in my uncompanioned lone eternity. For not for thee, the nameless, worldless naught, annihilation of thy living soul, and the end of thought and hope and life and love in the blank, measureless, unknowable, I lay my hands upon thy heart of love. I yoke thee to my power of work in time. Because thou hast obeyed my timeless will, because thou hast chosen to share earth's struggle and fate, and leaned in pity over earth-bound men, and turned aside to help, and yearn to save, I bind by thy heart's passion, thy heart to mine, and lay my splendid yoke upon thy soul. Now will I do in thee my marvelous works. I will fasten thy nature with my cords of strength, subdued to my delight, thy spirit's limbs, and make thee a vivid knot of all my bliss, and build in thee my proud and crystal home. Thy days shall be my shafts of power and light, thy nights my starry mysteries of joy, and all my clouds light tangled in thy hair, and all my springtimes marry in thy mouth. O sun world, thou shalt raise the earth's soul to light, and bring down God into the lives of men. Earth shall be my work chamber and my house, my garden of life to plant a seed divine. When all thy work in human time is done, the mind of earth shall be a home of light, the life of earth a tree growing towards heaven, the body of earth a tabernacle of God. Awaken from the mortal's ignorance, men shall be lit with the eternal's ray and the glory of my sun lift in their thoughts and feel in their hearts the sweetness of my love and in their acts my power's miraculous drive. My will shall be the meaning of their days, living for me, by me, in me they shall live. In the heart of my creation's mystery, I will enact the drama of thy soul, inscribe the long romance of thee and me. I will pursue thee across the centuries. Thou shalt be hunted through the world by love, naked of ignorance protecting veil, and without cover from my radiant gods, no shape shall screen thee from my divine desire. Nowhere shalt thou escape my living eyes. In the nudity of thy discovered self, in a bare identity with all that is, disrobed of thy covering of humanity, 
divested of the dense veil of human thought, made one with every mind and body and heart, made one with all nature and with self and God, summing in thy single soul my mystic world, I will possess in thee my universe. The universe find all I am in thee. Thou shalt bear all things that all things may change. Thou shalt fill all with my splendor and my bliss. Thou shalt meet all with thy transmuting soul. Assailed by my infinitudes above and quivering in immensities below, pursued by me through my mind's wallless vast, oceanic with the surges of my life, a swimmer lost between two leaping seas by my outer pains and inner sweetnesses, finding my joy in my opposite mysteries, thou shalt respond to me from every nerve. A vision shall compel thy coursing breath, thy heart shall drive thee on the wheel of works, thy mind shall urge thee through the flames of thought to meet me in the abyss and on the heights, to feel me in the tempest and the calm, to love me in the noble and the vile, in beautiful things and terrible desire. The pains of hell shall be to thee my kiss, the flowers of heaven persuade thee with my touch. My fiercest masks shall my attractions bring. Music shall find thee in the voice of souls. Beauty pursue thee through the core of flame. Thou shalt know me in the rolling of the spheres and crush me in the atoms of the world. The wheeling forces of my universe shall cry to thee the summons of my name. Delight shall drop down from my nectarous moon. My fragrance sees thee in the jasmine snare. My eye shall look upon thee from the sun. Mirror of nature's secret spirit made, thou shalt reflect my hidden heart of joy. Thou shalt drink down my sweetness unalloyed in my pure lotus cup of starry brim. My dreadful hands laid on thy bosom shall force thy being, bathed in fiercest longing streams. Thou shalt discover the one and quivering note and cry the harp of all my melodies and roll my foaming wave in seas of love. Even my disastrous clutch shall be to thee the ordeal of my rapture's contrary shape. In pain self shall smile on thee my secret face. Thou shalt bear my ruthless beauty unabridged amid the world's intolerable wrongs, trampled by the violent misdeeds of time, cry out to the ecstasy of my rapture's touch. All beings shall be to thy life my emissaries. 
drawn to me on the bosom of thy friend, compelled to meet me in thy enemy's eyes. My creatures shall demand me from thy heart. Thou shalt not shrink from any brother's soul. Thou shalt be attracted helplessly to all. Men seeing thee shall feel my hands of joy. In sorrow's pangs feel steps of the world's delight. Their life experience is tumultuous shock in the mutual craving of two opposites. Hearts touched by thy love shall answer to my call. Discover the ancient music of the spheres in the revealing accents of thy voice and nearer draw to me because thou art. <laughs> Enamored of thy spirit's loveliness, they shall embrace my body in thy soul. Here in thy life, the beauty of my love, know the thrill bliss with which I made the world. All that thou hast shall be for others' bliss. All that thou art shall to my hands belong. I will pour delight from thee as from a jar. I will whirl thee as my chariot through the waves. I will use thee as my sword and as my lyre. I will play on thee my minstrelsies of thought. And when thou art vibrant with all ecstasy, and when thou livest one spirit with all things, then will I spare thee not my living fires, but make thee a channel for my timeless force. My hidden presence led thee unknowing on from thy beginning in earth's voiceless bosom, through life and pain and time and will and death, through outer shocks and inner silences, along the mystic roads of space and time, to the experience which all nature hides. Who hunts and seizes me, my captive grows. This shalt thou henceforth learn from thy heart beats. Forever love, O beautiful slave of God. O lasso of my rapture's widening news, become my cord of universal love. The spirit ensnared by thee, forced to delight of creation's oneness, sweet and fathomless, compelled to embrace my myriad unities and all my endless forms and divine souls. O mind, grow full of the eternal's peace. O world, Cry out the immortal litany. Built is the golden tower, the flame child born. Descend to life with him thy heart desires. O Satyavan, O luminous Savitri, I sent you forth of old beneath the stars a dual power of God in an ignorant world, in a hedged creation, shut from limitless self, bringing down God to the insentient globe, 
lifting earth beings to immortality. In the world of my knowledge and my ignorance, where God is unseen and only is heard a name, and knowledge is trapped in the boundaries of mind, and life is hauled in the dragnet of desire, and matter hides the soul from its own sight, you are my force at work to uplift Earth's fate, myself that moves up the immense incline between the extremes of the spirits night and day. He is my soul that climbs from nascent night through life and mind and supernature's vast to the supernal light of timelessness and my eternity hid in moving time and my boundlessness cut by the curve of space. It climbs to the greatness it has left behind and to the beauty and joy from which it fell, to the closeness and sweetness of all things divine, to light without bounds and life illimitable, taste of the depths of the ineffable's bliss, touch of the immortal and the infinite. He is my soul that gropes out of the beast to reach humanity's heights of use and thought and the vicinity of truth sublime. He is the Godhead growing in human lives and in the body of earth beings form. He is the soul of man climbing to God in nature's surge out of earth's ignorance. O Savitri, thou art my spirit's power, the revealing voice of my immortal word, the face of truth upon the roads of time pointing to the souls of men the roots to God. While the dim light from the veil spirit speak falls upon matter stark in conscience sleep as if a pale moonbeam on a dense glade and mind in a half light moves amid half truths and the human heart knows only human love and life is a stumbling and imperfect force and the body counts out its precarious days, you shall be born into man's dubious hours in forms that hide the soul's divinity and show through veils of the earth's doubting air my glory breaking as through clouds a sun, or burning like a rare and inward fire, and with my nameless influence fill men's lives. Yet shall they look up as to peaks of God, and feel God like a circumambient air, and rest on God as on a motionless base. Yet shall there glow on mind like a horned moon, the spirit's crescent splendor in pale skies, and light man's life upon his Godward road. But more there is concealed in God's beyond that shall one day reveal its hidden face. Now mind is all, and its uncertain ray. Mind is the leader of the body and life. 
mind, the thought driven chariot of the soul carrying the luminous wanderer in the night to vistas of a far uncertain dawn, to the end of the spirit's fathomless desire, to its dream of absolute truth and utter bliss. There are greater destinies mind cannot surmise, fixed on the summit of the evolving path, the traveller now treads in the ignorance, unaware of his next step, not knowing his goal. Mind is not all his tireless climb can reach. There is a fire on the apex of the worlds. There is a house of the eternal's light. There is an infinite truth and absolute power. The spirit's mightiness shall cast off its mask. Its greatness shall be felt, shaping the world's course. It shall be seen in its own veilless beams, a star rising from the inconscious light, a sun climbing to supernature's peak. Abandoning the dubious middle way, a few shall glimpse the miraculous origin, and some shall feel in you the secret force, and they shall turn to meet a nameless tread, adventurers into a mightier day. Ascending out of the limiting breaths of mind, they shall discover the world's huge design and step into the truth, the right, the vast. You shall reveal to them the hidden eternity, the breath of infinitude, not yet revealed, some rapture of the bliss that made the world, some rush of the force of God's omnipotence, some beam of the omniscient mystery. But when the hour of the divine draws near, the mighty mother shall take birth in time and God be born into the human clay in forms made ready by your human lives. Then shall the truth supreme be given to men. There is a being beyond the being of mind, an immeasurable cast into many forms, a miracle of the multitudinous one. There is a consciousness mind cannot touch, its speech cannot utter, nor its thought reveal. It has no home on earth, no center in man, yet is the source of all things thought and done, the fount of the creation and its works. It is the origin of all truth here the sun orb of mind's fragmentary rays, infinity's heaven that spills the rain of God, the immense that calls to man to expand the spirit, the wide aim that justifies his narrow attempts, a channel for the little he tastes of bliss. Some shall be made the glory's receptacles and vehicles of the eternal's luminous power. These are the high forerunners, the heads of time, the great deliverers of earth-bound mind, the high transfigurers of human clay, the firstborn of a new supernal race. The incarnate dual power shall open God's door. 
eternal super mind touch earthly time the superman shall wake in mortal man and manifest the hidden demigod or grow into the god light and god force revealing the secret deity in the cave then shall the earth be touched by the supreme his bright unveiled transcendence shall illumine the mind and heart and force the life and act to interpret his inexpressible mystery in a heavenly alphabet of divinity sign his living cosmic spirit shall enring annulling the decree of death and pain erasing the formulas of the ignorance with the deep meaning of beauty and life's hid sense the being ready for immortality his regard crossing infinity's mystic waves bring back to nature her early joy to live the metered heart beats of a lost delight the cry of a forgotten ecstasy the dance of the first world creating bliss the immanent shall be the witness god watching on his many petaled lotus throne his actionless being and his silent might ruling earth nature by eternity's law a thinker waking the inconscious world an immobile center of many infinitudes in his thousand pillared temple by time see then shall the embodied being live as one who is a thought a will of the divine a mask or robe of his divinity an instrument and partner of his force a point or line drawn in the infinite a manifest of the imperishable the super mind shall be his nature's fount the eternal truth shall mold his thoughts and acts the eternal truth shall be his light and guide all then shall change a magic order come overtopping this mechanical universe a mightier race shall inhabit the mortal's world on nature's luminous tops on the spirit's ground the superman shall reign as king of life make earth almost the mate and peer of heaven and lead towards god and truth man's ignorant heart and lift towards god head his mortality a power released from circumscribing bounds is height pushed up beyond death's hungry reach life stops shall flame with the immortal thought light shall invade the darkness of its base then in the process of evolving time all shall be drawn into a single plan a divine harmony shall be earth's law beauty and joy remold her way to live even the body shall remember god nature shall draw back from mortality and spirit fires shall guide the earth's blind force 
Knowledge shall bring into the aspirant thought a high proximity to truth and God. The supermind shall claim the world for light and thrill with love of God, the enamored heart, and place light's crown on nature's lifted head and found light's reign on her unshaking base. A greater truth than earth's shall roof in earth and shed its sunlight on the roads of mind. A power infallible shall lead the thought, a seeing puissance govern life and act in earthly hearts kindle the immortal's fire. A soul shall wake in the inconscious house the mind shall be God visions tabernacle, the body intuition's instrument, and life a channel for God's visible power. All earth shall be the spirit's manifest home, hidden no more by the body and the life, hidden no more by the mind's ignorance. An unerring hand shall shape event and act. The spirit's eyes shall look through nature's eyes. The spirit's force shall occupy nature's force. This world shall be God's visible garden house. The earth shall be a field and camp of God. Man shall forget consent to mortality and his embodied frail impermanence. This universe shall unseal its occult sense. Creation's process change its antique front. An ignorant evolution's hierarchy Release the wisdom chain below its base. The spirit shall be the master of his world, lurking no more in forms obscurity, and nature shall reverse her action's rule. The outward world disclosed the truth it veils. All things shall manifest the covered God. All shall reveal the Spirit's light and might and move to its destiny of felicity. Even should a hostile force cling to its reign and claim its rights perpetual sovereignty and man refuse his high spiritual faith, yet shall the secret truth in things prevail. For in the march of all fulfilling time, the hour must come of the transcendence will. All turns and winds towards his predestined ends in nature's fixed inevitable course decreed since the beginning of the world in the deep essence of created things. Even there shall come, as a high crown of all, the end of death, the death of ignorance. But first high truth must set her feet on earth, and man aspire to the eternal's light, and all his members feel the spirit's touch, and all his life obey an inner force. This too shall be, for a new life shall come. 
a body of the superconscious truth, a native field of supernature's might. It shall make earth's nascent ground truth's colony, make even the ignorance a transparent robe through which shall shine the brilliant limbs of truth, and truth shall be a sun on nature's head, and truth shall be the guide of nature's steps, and truth shall gaze out of her nether deeps. When Superman is born as nature's king, his presence shall transfigure matter's world. He shall light up through its fire in nature's light. He shall lay upon the earth truth's greater law. Man too shall turn towards the spirit's call. Awake to his hidden possibility, awake to all that slept within his heart and all that nature meant when earth was formed and the spirit made this ignorant world his home, he shall aspire to truth and God and bliss. Interpreter of a diviner law, and instrument of a supreme design, the higher kind shall lean to lift up man. Man shall desire to climb to his own heights. The truth above shall wake a nether truth. Even the dumb earth become a sentient force. The spirit stops and nature's base shall draw near to the secret of their separate truth and know each other as one deity. The spirit shall look out through matter's gaze and matter shall reveal the spirit's face. Then man and superman shall be at one and all the earth become a single life. Even the multitude shall hear the voice and turn to commune with the spirit within and strive to obey the high spiritual law. This earth shall stir with impulses sublime. Humanity awake to deeper self, nature, the hidden Godhead recognize. Even the many shall some answer make and bear the splendor of the Divine's rush and his impetuous knock at unseen doors. A heavenlier passion shall upheave men's lives. Their mind shall share in the ineffable gleam. Their hearts shall feel the ecstasy and the fire. Earth's bodies shall be conscious of a soul. Mortality's bond slaves shall unloose their bonds. Mere men into spiritual beings grow and see awake the dumb divinity. Intuitive beams shall touch the nature's peaks. A revelation stir the nature's depths. The truth shall be the leader of their lives. Truth shall dictate their thought and speech and act. They shall feel themselves lifted nearer to the sky as if a little lower than the gods. For knowledge shall pour down in radiant streams and even darkened mind quiver with new life 
and kindle and burn with the ideal's fire and turn to escape from mortal ignorance. The frontiers of the ignorance shall recede. More and more souls shall enter into light. Minds lit, inspired. The occult summoner here and lives blaze with a sudden inner flame and hearts grow enamored of divine delight and human wills tune to the divine will. These separate selves, the spirit's oneness feel, these senses of heavenly sense grow capable, the flesh and nerves of a strange ethereal joy and mortal bodies of immortality. A divine force shall flow through tissue and cell and take the charge of breath and speech and act and all the thoughts shall be a glow of suns and every feeling a celestial thrill. Often a lustrous inner dawn shall come, lighting the chambers of the slumbering mind. A sudden bliss shall run through every limb and nature with a mightier presence fill. Thus shall the earth open to divinity and common natures feel the wide uplift, illumine common acts with the spirit's ray and meet the deity in common things. Nature shall live to manifest secret God. The spirit shall take up the human play. This earthly life become the life divine. The measure of that subtle music ceased. Down with a hurried, swimming, floating lapse through unseen worlds and bottomless spaces forced, sank like a star the soul of Savitri. Amidst a laughter of unearthly lyres, she heard around her nameless voices cry, triumphing an innumerable sound. A coil of rushing winds to meet her came. She bore the burden of infinity and felt the stir of all ethereal space. Pursuing her in her fall, implacably sweet, a face was over her which seemed a youth's symbol of all the beauty I see not, crowned as with peacock plumes of gorgeous hue, framing a sapphire whose heart-disturbing smile insatiably attracted to delight, voluptuous to the embraces of her soul. Changed in its shape, yet rapturously the same, it grew a woman's, dark and beautiful, like a mooned night with drifting star-gemmed clouds, a shadowy glory and a stormy depth, turbulent in will and terrible in love. Eyes in which nature's blind ecstatic life sprang from some spirit's passionate content missioned her to the whirling dance of earth. Amidst the headlong rapture of her fall, 
held like a bird in a child's satisfied hands, in an enamored grasp, her spirit strove, admitting no release till time should end. And as the fruit of the mysterious joy, she kept within her strong embosoming soul like a flower hidden in the heart of spring, the soul of Satyavan drawn down by her inextricably in that mighty lapse. Invisible heavens in a thronging flight soared past her as she fell. Then all the blind and near attraction of the earth compelled fearful rapidities of downward bliss. Lost in the giddy proneness of that speed, whirled, sinking, overcome, she disappeared like a leaf spinning from a tree of heaven in broad unconsciousness as in a pool. A hospitable softness drew her in into a wonder of miraculous depths. Above her closed a darkness of great wings and she was buried in a mother's breast. Then from a timeless plane that watches time, a spirit gazed out upon destiny in its endless moment saw the ages pass. All still was in a silence of the gods. Prophet moment covered limitless space and cast into the heart of hurrying time a diamond light of the eternal's peace, a crimson seed of God's felicity. A glance from the gaze fell of undying love. A wonderful face looked out with deathless eyes. A hand was seen drawing the golden bars that guard the imperishable secrecy. A key turned in a mystic lock of time. But where the silence of the gods had passed, a greater harmony from the stillness born, surprised with joy and sweetness, yearning hearts and ecstasy and a laughter and a cry. A power leaned down, a happiness found its home. Over wide earth brooded the infinite bliss.